Hello folks, a special hello to student teachers and teachers. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a few. Number one, flannel board. The flannel board is basically a board that is covered with flannel material. The base is usually a thin piece of cardboard or even chart, hard bound chart. On to this, the flannel material or the woolen material is wrapped and fastened. So the teaching aid is prepared in cutouts in different sizes based on the story or the concept that is being taught. And as the teacher goes through the reading or goes through the explanation, the particular teaching aid is fixed onto the flannel board. This board is very useful for revision. In the notes of lesson, we have a step called as the recapitulation. So when you use a flannel board, your recapitulation would be successful because all you've got to do is just remove the cutouts and ask children to give the response and based on that you can ask them to come forward and fix the particular cutout. So this would create an engaging experience for the students. The teaching aids are made in a way that it could get attached to the board. It is similar to fixing magnetic toys or articles on the door of our fridge and moving it around, removing it. Likewise, a flannel board can be extremely useful to create stimulation as well as to promote visual learning. Now these boards come in specific colors. But what is actually put up? Well, information from magazines, newspapers, illustrations, textbooks, as well as from the web. It keeps the class dust free. Another benefit would be it promotes visual learning. Number three, it allows students to come forward and fix the particular cutout or the chart. Number four, it is reusable n number of times. Number five, it is portable, which means it is easy to carry. Number six, it is easy to replace because if at all there is some damage, you may have to just add on one more layer of flannel cloth, which would thereby save your board and give it a new look. Number two, magnetic board. A magnetic board can also enhance the teaching learning process provided there is a proper mechanism to get the teaching aid fixed onto the board. Now, in some cases, the magnetic board is portable but it still depends a lot on the setup of the class, the number of learners and whether the teacher is able to carry it around. A magnetic board is a great tool to teach children to prioritize what needs to be done. Now since the strips or the source of information would be you know in magnets so that it could be movable. So children could be taught to reassemble based on the need of the hour. For instance, Submitting the drawing notebook may be a priority. So the teacher should move that up and then comes the second, the third and likewise. So children learn to prioritize. The white magnetic board serves many purposes because it is user friendly. It allows the teacher to write as well as to invite students to come forward to fix certain flashcards, letters or numbers. Why do I say it is preferably white magnetic board? because you can engage writing using a marker. Additional to that, you can use suitable teaching aids and fix it with magnets. Apart from this, it helps the teacher to have an enriched experience of having delivered something so that is close to the student's work because most of the students write on white paper, so you have a white board. They use pen or pencils to write important information, maybe the heading or even parts of the particular object or diagram, isn't it? Likewise, you can use a chart for the diagram and then to mark the parts, you can use the marker. Therefore, I recommend white magnetic board to be used in your classes. Now, if you are somebody who would like to make your own magnetic board, well, as far as I know, most of the schools have blackboards and they have the capacity to attract magnets. So in such cases, you can use the chalk to write on the board as usual or as discussed just now. You have your cutouts, you place it on the board and you fix the magnet. So this actually saves a lot of time, uh, particularly when the teacher is not so good at drawing 
or maybe the teacher takes a lot of time to draw the teacher can take time in advance prepare the necessary drawing or the chart and then bring it to class well my suggestion is never try to replicate what is given in the textbook if you have to enhance the learning capacity or you have to promote more understanding why don't you come in with another diagram but you'll have to explain to children the connection between the diagrams that is the textbook would show a particular part or a particular portion while you may be drawing another part or another portion you have to establish a connection this promotes meta thinking a very important skill in today's world of ai i personally recommend you to use a white magnetic board because it gives a closer representation of the child's notebook as you know children write on white papers or notebooks and when the board is white you use a particular color to write on the board likewise they use their pen and pencils and when it comes to drawing an image or maybe the map or maybe numerals or something like that then automatically you will take the chart and fix it so then the child understands that the coloring box needs to come out the color pencils need to start working i need to you know replicate what my teacher has done so there's an urge there's an urge to do what is on the board and when you walk around the class you go in giving directions giving your presence helping students you know with those little uh, curves or little marks for the drawing then i think this will create a great uh, learning experience with the skill of observation one big takeaway is when you are correcting the notebooks of children and if you find that your red ink marks are very less it is a sign that your children are good observers sometimes some children may end up making so many mistakes and as a result the teacher has to sit and write all those correct words so then you have to call that child check whether the child has any other problem in terms of seeing the board being comfortable sitting next to the other students or is there any visual challenge or any kind of deficiency any kind of glare so you'll have to explore that it takes a lot of effort and observation for you to achieve success and success comes not just by mere marks it is when your child is able to establish multiple skills number 3 a pocket card to make it easier for you to understand try to recollect and see of all the invitations you received did you ever notice that there was a card which had a source or maybe an option to be pulled out that is an example of a pocket card where you will have a folder and an outlet where you can pull out the card now this would be a great tool to promote recapitulation in the teaching learning process it will be good to use pocket cards to even introduce the concept particularly when you're doing a kind of logical explanation where you talk about how grain is created so what happens first then you pull it out then you go to the second card you explain the second step then you go to the third step likewise then you can ask children to uh, you know shuffle themselves and stand and you can ask the rest of the class to arrange the cards in the particular order or in the correct order pocket cards can be extremely user friendly number 2 it will also create an engaging learning experience number 3 you can ask children to prepare the pocket cards based on what was taught to them or maybe what was discussed sometimes you can even prepare simple activities in a pocket card for example maybe you can take about 5 or 6 cards and have some message put into it when you go to class you can ask children to come forward and pick up a card and when they do so they have to do what is mentioned in the card for example it could be narrate a poem or talk about a recent uh, incident that touched your heart or talk about a day at the sports ground something like that this would all promote creativity and it will end up in a beautiful experience for the child so they'll be excited when you say pocket cards activity you can convert it as an activity as well you can keep it as a part of your teaching learning process where you use it as a teaching aid number 4 reading cards reading cards again can help to promote reading skills for example when you give your class library time where in the class they have to read it can be any subject when they are engaged in reading you can quickly give a child a reading card 
So you can have simple messages written on it. What has happened so far? What is likely to happen next? What is your opinion? Is it interesting? Why? Or is it not interesting? Why? So you can pass these cards around randomly and promote the need for children to open and read that card and connect it to what they were actually reading in class. Reading cards can also be used to promote a concept or maybe to revise the lesson taught. For example, if it's going to be a prose lesson where you're talking about Rip Van Winkle, you can have a reading card saying change the plot. What would happen at the end of the story? So give the reading card to a child, ask them to open it and read. So they'll have to imagine and say what would be a different ending to that particular story, change the character. Sometimes it can even, the reading card can even give them an activity to draw, draw Rip Van Winkle or draw the solar eclipse or create the solar eclipse in your own imagination. So something like that. It can be directional, it can be dimensional, it can be even vocabulary based. For example, it can be as simple as find five new words that you just wrote or you just learnt. So in the complete lesson, the children would start searching. Children will look forward to the reading card activity. Through this, they will learn multiple skills. Another way is to ask children to prepare reading cards for each other. You can put them in pairs and give them some time to prepare the card, give them some time to exchange the card, give them some time to complete the activity. So once you do this, maybe once a week or twice a week, children will get into the pattern. Then slowly you can make it monthly. Depending on the age group, depending on the class, depending on the place you teach. There are some schools that are only confined to the syllabus. But there are some schools that look at teaching beyond the curriculum, beyond the syllabus. So this is where the teacher needs to go beyond and make a difference, particularly making our children fit globally in terms of being able to communicate, able to reason out, to understand math, to understand science, to understand history, geography, and how all these subjects connect to an adult's life. Number five would be puppets. What do I mean when I say puppets? I'm sure you know what a puppet is, but it's very important for a teacher to learn how to make puppets because there can be classes where children are extremely bored or they have some kind of issue, some kind of disturbances. So when you go to class, you take out puppets, you, you do a puppet play, children are definitely going to like it. And for the higher level of students, you can ask them to prepare the puppet play based on any concept you are trying to teach them or you have taught them. The next is vocabulary wall. It can be simple as when you teach a lesson and you find a new word, you can write it on, on in charts or you can ask the students to write it and go and paste it on the wall that is dedicated in the class for vocabulary building. Now this can be across subjects. It doesn't have to just be confined to languages. It can be science, it can be history, geography, any new word that is taught to the child. The child can be taught to make use of the vocabulary wall. Maybe every week you can ask the children to read the vocabulary that is mentioned on the wall. Randomly you can ask them to give the meaning. You can randomly ask them to stand up and make sentences or even frame questions. So when you do all this, children gain a lot of confidence, particularly they learn how to use LSRW skills. I think I've given you a little bit of explanation in this about teaching aids and I'm sure you will be doing justice. Share the knowledge, happy teaching and best wishes on becoming a divine teacher, a teacher with a difference.